lot of, r I think, really, really interesting studies that are going on right now. And you actually alluded to this issue about the lymph node dissection. I remember that when you look back at the data from Memorial, I think the median number of lymph nodes that were removed were eight. And we often see uh, a, a large variation from outside of our institutions as far as what the, the lymph node dissections, uh, how many lymph nodes are taken. So what studies are, are now being evaluated to, to look at that particular question? It's a pretty complex question uh, in the first place. So I think uh, let's take it from various aspects. Uh, the first one is actually there's a study by Copy uh, and colleagues from our institution asking a simple question is if we look at the increasing number of no's, is there a higher limit? And in point of fact, actually, that curve just kept going up. And I, I'm not certain it's the exact number of nodes, but I think it's the how meticulous the, the bilateral node dissection is um, and how far up does it extend. There are studies looking at defining a dissection, you know, up to the bifurcation of the iliacs versus up to the bifurcation of the aorta and whether that greater or extended lymph node dissection uh, makes a difference. Some people are carrying it further to the inferior mesenteric artery, which I don't think that two and a half centimeters really makes a big difference. But in terms of the pathologists in the review, uh, that also is, a, is complex as well because Bernie Bachner did a study looking at patients who had a dissection both sides, same surgeon, but on one side uh, he sent one whole packet, on the other side he sent two separate packets, and the, and the dissections that had two separate uh, um, packets had more lymph nodes. So we're using the number of lymph nodes as a surrogate with regard to quality of dissection. I think um, we, are, we do have a randomized trial looking at uh, the level of dissection, a, a so-called standard dissection versus an extended dissection. We'll see if that plays a role. I think that that's an important study. Uh, and then I think the, the other issue is that uh, we need to export this to the community. If one looks at the national data, 40% of patients in the United States who have a, um, a cystectomy and a pelvic lymph node dissection have three or less nodes in the dissection, and in fact, that study showed only 12% of patients who undergo surgery actually had 10 nodes or more. So we really need to, to get that quality of surgery out into the community, I think. And it certainly can have a very, very drastic effect on the results of a large randomized trial if the surgery is not consistent from institution to institution. And that's actually, in, in the adjuvant studies, uh, those studies actually control for the number of lymph nodes, which is an indirect way of controlling for the quality of surgery. Exactly. Actually, in the SWOG trial as well, the extended versus more limited lymph node dissection trial, they do qualify the surgeon. They have to first be observed for five surgeries, and so it's very clear that these are qualified surgeons to do these dissections. So I think it's a good point. Yeah, it's, it's actually, we, we actually just went through our qualification process, so it's, it's actually quite extensive. We have to take photographs of the lymph node dissection while the patient's in the operating room to, to confirm that this is actually being done in the way that the study has, has mandated. So. I think we should get some good, good, clear answers out of that particular trial. I think the marker question is extremely important because clearly we don't want to give ineffective chemotherapy to a patient who may be resistant up front. And one of the things that we're doing right now in SWOG is we're doing a randomized trial, uh, something called coxin, which is a way of looking at uh, the molecular profile of, of the tumor. It's going to be done retrospectively. Patients are randomized to either GEMSYS or extended dose MVAC. Uh, but certainly we may understand more about the marker patterns and profiles in terms of response and, and, uh, and prognosis. Yeah, it's an interesting profile because that's actually derived from cell lines, not necessarily bladder cancer cell lines, but derived from cell lines looking at sensitivity of individual drugs. It's really a novel idea, and the most important thing is it's being tested in a prospective study, and that's what we really need for these market exactly. development trials. And we can't emphasize enough the need for putting patients on trials such as these to understand biologically what's going on and how to move things forward. So, uh, a patient